and welcome back to the hot lap and let's talk about the big issue the big problem that formula one has that no one seems to be talking about and that's viewing figures yes saudi arabian grand prix in the u.s down by 40 percent i mean it got 920,000 viewers on saturday caveat it was a saturday but that's down from 40 percent and that's 1.523 million but and here's the thing that is not the only thing that's slightly concerning for Formula One. Netflix viewing figures are also down for Drive to Survive. The audience figures for the first three days, average audience, 2.9 million viewers that watched across its first three days. And that's a sharp drop, year on year drop of 30% on last year's equivalent figure, which is very concerning, I think. Is it Verstappen's fault? Well, it could be, couldn't it? Let's be honest. Absolute dominance. That's not to take anything away from him but this is why i wanted to get into it i mean this is an article um and it's talking about the u.s viewership points towards potential wider issues um and it says here there's specific information on f1 viewership around the world is obviously limited as we know sky sports publishes end of year figures rather than race by race now with f1's current focus as we know the u.s expan expansion three races in the United States. There's even talk of a fourth one in Chicago. And because it is a growing expansion, this article is suggesting that it is a good indicator of the overall health of the series. It has a large untapped potential. And before the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, the 2023 season, it says, was averaging 1.12 million viewers. And that's on the Disney-owned ESPN. That's um, short, though, of last year's average of 1.21 million viewers. And it includes the inaugural Las Vegas Grand Prix, the first one, the premiere, F1's premiere event of last year. And despite all the, harp, all the hype, it's suggesting that it only attracted... 1.3 million viewers. Now, for context, it says the Miami debut last season drew 2.6 million viewers. As you can see, the article had 2.6 million viewers, and Las Vegas 1.3. And it says the US audience ha clearly has interest in these new events being staged in its home market, but it's currently not. Well, it's currently not being given enough of a reason to stick around. It, is that because it's very boring? Once again, not to take anything away from Red Bull and Verstappen, but when you know the results of a Grand Prix before first practice, it kind of takes the sting out of it, doesn't it? Um, Here's another interesting article, I thought. It's basically going on 600,000 US viewers abandoned Saudi GP, and this was this year, amidst a dull of a stap and dominance. Yes, and it, it talks again about the worrying trend as viewership sees a major dip in 2024. The biggest dip comes from the American audience, despite F1's efforts to grow in the States. The downfall they're suggesting is as high as 40%. That's 600,000 viewers, and that's compared to the viewership numbers of last year. Big caveat though, Saudi GP was on a Saturday. Now the trend viewers claim the dominance of Max Verstappen is at the forefront of this downward trend. And also thanks to Netflix Drive to Survive, it has seen F1 in the recent years, as you probably know, has seen a major boost, particularly in American audience starting watching the show in big numbers. After that, let's be fair, epic 2021 season. However, it seems that the continued dominance of Verstappen and Red Bull, quite rightly, has bored the fans. I guess unless you are a Verstappen fan. And as you can see here, that's the US weekend viewership. NASCAR, 4 million, that's uh, up by 19%. IndyCar was de uh, slightly down for their season opener. And Formula 1 down by 40%. I mean, that's really it's fairly significant compared to all the other US motorsports. So... And so this year's Saudi Grand Prix saw 920,000 viewers catch the race. In comparison, 1.52 million people chimed in during last year's race. Thus, there's been a downfall of at least 40%. The number was even smaller um, than the inaugural race. The first race was 937,000 that people tuned into to watch the race as Lewis Hamilton drove to victory in Bahrain. So, I mean, that's... It is worrying, isn't it? 40% down. And this is a fallen viewership has quickly become the trend in F1. And it does not bode well 
for the future. In July last year, F1 lost nearly 650,000 of its American audience. Experts suggest the reason behind the loss was the same as today. In 22, 2.6 million people tuned in ABC to watch the Miami Grand Prix. That's the first one. And it became the most watched F1 race in American history. However, last year for the Miami Grand Prix, 25 a quarter, 25% fewer people tuned in to watch that same race. And it continues that the inaugural race of this year fared no better. 1.31 million people saw the Bahrain Grand Prix. The year the number, this year, the number dropped to 1.12, a 200,000 drop. Once again, Bahrain Grand Prix, though, was on a Saturday. But there was a major viewership drop in Italy as well. This year's race saw nearly 500 thousand half a million lesser italian fans tune into the race now given the drop in numbers in the first two races it looks likely that this is going going to make a trend <laughs> going into this season however this article suggests there's still hope for the sport um and fingers that uh, fingers crossed i mean you've got lewis hamilton going to ferrari the turbulence at red bull it says could play a pivotal role in leveling the playing field it's a, it, i don't think it does they built a really really good car and unless someone can challenge him i do not think that is going to happen but it just makes for interesting reading um and even here it talks about 2023 fan interest dipped during the verstappen's dominant year and it says 2023 was unquestionably a record year for verstappen its supremacy impacted worldwide and it says despite this figures in the uk they held up well compared to their neighbors 2023 sky's f1 channel reached let me just zoom that in a bit so you can see Skies, so we've got here, uh, breaking down F1's longest season. So Sky's F1 channel, it reached 3.4 million viewers per, uh, per month. But that's a dip of 6% compared to 2022, which was 3.62. So not the worst. And it's a tale of two halves compared with 2022 for Sky. A poor spring followed a good recovery for the summer and autumn. Audience figures slumped by 17%. And 25% in April and May, it says, hindered by a disjointed start to the season, thanks to obviously the cancellation of China and the Imola, Emilia Romanga, Romanga? Romanga yeah, grounds. Now, nevertheless, audience figures rebounded, they said, by the summer, 5% and 7% in July and September, and only marginal decreases uh, October and November, 5% and 3%. That's minus. Now, Verstappen wrapped up the championship early, but other stories, such as McLaren's resurgence and the inaugural Las Vegas Grand Prix, kept fans engaged. And the Las Vegas Grand Prix was quite exciting in the end, wasn't it? Now, while it's fair to say it says that the attention has dipped since that 2021 season, interest in the sport remains good in the UK and above levels, uh, above levels before, obviously, the pandemic. Audience figures also decreased slightly in the US. However, the season remained the second most viewed ever stateside, only behind 22. But as I said, the most recent figures do show that worrying trend. What can Formula One do? Um, 2020 and 2021, they hurt Mercedes uh, with these new regulations. F1 knew they were going to hurt Mercedes, which brought them back. And we had that epic 2021 season. Um, rule changes. Uh, I mean, 2004 one of Ferrari's dominant years, and they hit them where it hurts in the tyres. And in the 2005 season, you had to, you only had one set of tyres for the whole race. And that and that, that really struggled. Ferrari really, really struggled in 2005. But we had an interesting year. And Fernando Alonso's first title. So F, the FIA um, and Formula 1, they have done things in the past. But it is really up to the teams to catch up. But so far... So many times in the past, we have had the governing body intervene. Should they intervene? Well, it's a sport. I get it. But it's also a sport that needs to make money. F1 would not be here because of the fans. You guys tuning in, there would be no there would be no Formula One, would there? So uh, a balance, maybe, I guess. Anyway, if you made it to the end, like and subscribe. That would be fantastic. And we'll speak to you soon.